So this is the first of a series of tutorials about the game Unconditional Surrender, which has recently been released on Board Game Arena. This is a medium complexity hex and counter war game. What does that mean? Well, it means that if you're into 1980s role-playing games, this is really simple. But if what you primarily play are early 2000s Euro games, this is one of the most daunting rule sets you will ever have encountered. It is intended to simulate the war in Europe from the outbreak in 1939 to the end in 1945, including the possibility for alternative history diplomatic relationships. And obviously, you know, that's a big thing. And this is the first Hex Encounter game that has appeared on Board Game Arena. There are some problems with an implementation like this. One of them is that if you're playing this across the table and you're a little bit unsure on exactly how a rule works, you and your opponent can go, oh, it's fine, just put the counter there and we'll roll the dice for it. You can't do that in a computer implementation. You have to know exactly where to click and exactly when to click, otherwise the game just kind of freezes up on you. So this is the first of a series of tutorials where I will be looking at the game and explaining not only in general terms the rules, but how those rules are implemented on Board Game Arena. Exactly how you deal with the interface. And I'm going to do this the way that wargamers always do this, which is when they're trying to learn a long, complicated game, they break it up into smaller sections uh, and focus on one particular bit of it and learn the rules for that and then move on to the next. In this particular case, the designer provided a whole range of scenarios and indicated that the best way to learn the game was to follow through on those scenarios one at a time and each one would teach you a little bit of the rules. So today we're going to look at the invasion of Poland in 1939. So let me just switch to the interface. If this is your normal interface when you're logging in on Board Game Arena, the first thing you're going to have to do to practice, do some practice games, is change the automatic to manual at the top. And now when you click on play now, it'll bring up a create new table box. So do the create new table. You want to change the game mode to training mode. You're only going to need one player at the table. And in this case, the table administrator is going to play the axes. And the scenario we're going to play is Poland 1939. And we're going to use the historical setup. This is quite a good game just to introduce basic elements because it can be played basically solo. We click open table to other players, even though there's nobody else is joining us. We click I accept and then we click start game and go to game. Here is the initial setup for Poland 1939. And in this, we're going to cover a couple of key rules. First of all, we're going to cover the concept of national will and how you conquer a country. You do that by driving the national will, which for Poland is 12, and it's located up in the right corner here. You do that by driving that national will down to zero and occupying one of their cities. The game is only going to last one actions subphase. So the Germans are going to move and do all their combats, and at the end, either they will have reduced Poland to a zero national will and conquered it, or they won't, and they will have lost. So these are the Polish units. They have a little designation on them. Six of these are standard infantry units. Two of these on the sides here are garrison units. Garrison units are much weaker. The Germans will be attacking with infantry units of their own, Panzer units, 
which have the lozenge-shaped symbol. By the way, I'm going to assume that you're coming to this video because you don't do war games, hex and counter war games, but you have played things on Board Game Arena and you're interested in trying it. So this is going to be a little bit basic if you know some hex and counter war games already, but hopefully it will be understandable for everybody. And aircraft. So <laughs> we're going to learn about each of these different types of units and how they operate. So let's begin with national will. In order to defeat Poland, we have to reduce the national will to zero. There are two things that will reduce the national will. If we destroy an infantry unit, it will reduce the national will by one. So that's a total of six points we can get that way. If we capture one of the cities, such as Danzig here, uh, I think this is Posen, Lodz, Krakow, we will reduce the national will by two points for each city captured. So that's eight points right there. And if Warsaw itself falls, that's worth four points. So capturing the cities alone would be enough. Destroying the infantry on its own won't be enough. So let's begin with movement. Units are moved one at a time and you have to complete almost all of the actions with a unit before you move on to another one. To activate a unit, click on it once. If you decide you don't want to use this unit, you've changed your mind, you can click undo move at the top until you've done something that's actually an aggressive action. The game is now displaying the hexes it can move to and how many movement points it will have left when it reaches those hexes. There are three things worth noting. The first is that when you move next to an enemy unit, say here, you have to stop moving. And that means that you can't get into central Poland because of the line of enemy units. And this concept, this projection of power around a unit is known as a zone of control. The zones of control in this game are sticky. They don't allow infiltration. So if you start in an enemy unit zone of control, you can still move. Uh, let me demonstrate that by activating this unit. You can see that even though this German unit begins in this zone of control, it can still move. But what it can't do is move into directly into another space that has a zone of control exerted on it. So it can't go between the two units. It also can't move northwest, not directly, which is why it will only have four movement points left in when it gets there, because it will have to move across the river this way, one point for crossing the river, one point for the move, and then back across the river, again, two points to get to that position. To get to here, it would have to trace a path completely round the zones of control. OK, but I am going to start with first Panzer. Now, there are two special types of indicator. If an enemy unit has a number on it, six on top of this Polish unit, it means that you have enough movement to attack that unit. If an enemy unit doesn't have a number on, you can't actually attack it. But you can't attack it by just pressing on the unit. You will have to move next to it first. If you get a red hex with a white number in it, it means that the city is not under your control and you're going to have to capture it from the enemy. Enemy cities that are not under your control are real interferences. So the first thing we're going to do is capture Danzig. So we just click on the Danzig space. Now, We've moved next to the Polish unit, so you'll notice the Polish unit is highlighted in red and all of our other movement options have disappeared because we've moved into a zone of control. We cannot now move again, but we can attack and we have two options when we attack. We can mobile attack by clicking on the unit itself or we can declare an assault by clicking on the arrow. In this scenario, we're mostly going to be using mobile attacks. So 
we click on the Polish unit and a box comes up which indicates to us how many movement points our Panzer has left, five, what the different combat factors are. Units are of different quality. A lot of the Eastern units in the game don't modify their dice rolls. British, American and French units generally add a plus one, as do late war Soviet units. German units all add a plus two, which makes German units very formidable, especially early in the game. Tank units get an additional plus two as long as they're in fair weather, which this scenario is fair weather. There are penalties for terrain. Generally speaking, you subtract a point from your dice roll if you're attacking into a space that contains bad terrain or a city, and you subtract a point if you are crossing some sort of obstacle like a river. So a maximum of minus two to your dice roll. You're also being offered various options here. The Germans can add air support. Air support counters that are fresh can fly up to six sorties. So a sortie is all sorts of things an aircraft might do, but in this particular case, it means providing air support for our units. There's two of them and they each provide six, so that's 12 in total. So I'm going to spend air support very lavishly and simply throw it at everything that I do. The Polish unit has an option on ground support. So this is a one-off counter that gives the Polish unit a plus one to its dice roll. Commit the air unit and the Polish will commit a ground support. And then we click on confirm attack carry out the attack itself. This now tells us the result, which is a no effect. There's nothing's happened, everything just carries on. The Axis player rolled a 1 on their die and the Polish player rolled a 5. As we go along, what I'll do is I'll highlight bits of the combat resolution table so you can get familiar with exactly where the important results arrive on that. Essentially, most of the time, the worst that we're expecting to happen is a no effect, that the Axis unit will simply bounce off. But what we're hoping for, to push the Polish units back and then get them into positions where we can either capture the towns they're defending or destroy them. So you have to click on the no effect to get rid of the box. And then we're still on first panzer's move, and it still has five movement points remaining. So what we do is we commit another attack. Mobile attacks can be done as often as you have movement points. And they cost one movement point for the attack, plus whatever it would cost to move into this space. So in this case, they're costing three movement points every time we do it. So potentially we could launch a lot of attacks here. So we commit some air again, the Polish commit a ground support, we confirm the attack. Now we get a much better result. The defender is disrupted, which means that they take a step loss, indicated by the white bar across the bottom of the unit. That will give them a penalty the next time they fight, and they have to retreat. The question of which of these spaces you retreat to is a complicated tactical one I'm not going to get into. But what I'm going to do is just send the Polish unit back to there. The German unit can move into the space if it wants to, or it can stay where it is. So you either click on the space that it would advance into, or you click on the space it's currently in, in order to get it not to advance. I want it to advance because we're trying to drive the Polish in units in towards the centre around Warsaw. Now, there's no river crossing now, which means the two movement points the Panzer has left are enough to attack the Polish unit. So we'll go ahead and do that. Normally, in this kind of situation with the Polish unit on a penalty and using a Panzer in open terrain, I wouldn't bother with air support because you're almost certainly going to win the fight. But, as I explained, in this scenario you've got 
12 air sorties. If it takes more than 12 attacks to get to the end of this game, you've probably lost anyway. So you might as well spend them lavishly as you go along. And the defender is eliminated. And the panzer can now move into the space that was previously occupied by that defending unit. Now, here's a really important thing. Once a unit has finished moving, you'll be able to tell because there will no longer be any green spaces around it. You must click on the unit itself to end its activation, which then causes it to take on this darker, greyed out appearance. If you do not click on it, you cannot do anything else. And it's the easiest mistake to make, is to pass on to dealing with another unit and you're clicking away and nothing's working. What we're going to do now is attack the unit that's in Poznan. And we're going to do that with this infantry unit. No, we're not. We're going to do that with this infantry unit because this infantry unit doesn't have a river hex side to cross. There's an important feature here. The Polish unit has nowhere to retreat that doesn't run into the zone of control of a German unit. And it has no friendly units adjacent to it. So the Germans get a plus two isolated bonus. Isolation's a really important concept. If you can stop a unit from treating by exerting zones of control all the way around it, and it is not adjacent to a friendly unit or a friendly city, it will then be isolated and you will get a plus two to your attack, which is as good as an airstrike. Isolation is what you're after. Throw in some air support and confirm the attack. The defender is disrupted. That means it takes a step loss and has to retreat. But, as we'll see, the unit had nowhere to retreat to. So it has to take an additional step loss because it can't complete the retreat. So now this unit moves into here and that's another city occupied and two units destroyed. And you will see that the Polish will to fight is down to six. We don't have to do a lot more to finish the game. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this unit to capture Lodz, which will also isolate this Polish unit here, and it will leave a little bit of an opportunity for an attack on that Polish unit. I've got two movement points left, that's enough for one attack. It's not enough for an attack on this isolated unit because I would have to cross a river hex side, which means I would need three movement points. Might as well throw in the attack. Throw in some air support. There's always a chance of getting a thing and it pushes the unit backwards and out of the way and makes it a little bit easier to get to Warsaw. Perfect. Now here, the Polish have to decide how they're going to move the unit. You would definitely not want to move it, retreat southeast, because if you retreat southeast, you open a large gap that the German forces can start to push through to Warsaw in. So you want to retreat back to here, where you're adjacent, you're protecting Warsaw, and Warsaw is preventing you from becoming an isolated unit. Here, I'm not going to follow up. I don't want this German unit getting in the way of the other attacks. So I click on the unit itself and that keeps it in its current position. First of all, I have to click on the unit to end its activation. <coughs> Again, that's really easy to miss. Now, I'm going to activate the second panzer here. Motorized and armored units get 10 movement points. Infantry and other units get eight. That means that a panzer can generally carry out more mobile attacks than an infantry unit, as well as being a much more dangerous unit to begin with. You can see the range of possible options this panzer has got. But I'm going to start by attacking the unit here. Throw in an air sortie, 
I want to just cut straight through the unit if that's possible. And it is, I get the Defender Disrupted result, which destroys the unit I'm attacking. I advance into the space. Now, the Polish have three points left. Capturing any city and destroying another unit will win. Capturing Warsaw will also win. I'm going to go for Warsaw. So what I'm going to do is move the Panzer to here and then attack the depleted Polish unit there to try and open up enough of a gap to attack Warsaw itself. And the defender is eliminated. Advance in. And now the red zero shows me that I have the option of attacking Warsaw. And the reason I can do this is because I've now eliminated the units around the Panzer unit. So it's free to move again. And Poland is conquered, which immediately results in all of its units disappearing. And that's it. So that's national will, how you activate a unit, how you conquer a country, how you uh, commit air power and other special things to combat, and how you carry out mobile attacks and movement. Those are the basic core rules of the game. So I'm going to try and do one of these each week. And next week what I'll do is I'll use the Russia 1941 training scenario, which will extend on this and it will show you how combat works on a turn by turn basis and introduce some new rules associated with that in a much larger, more complicated invasion scenario. See you then.